All right guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can automatically play the YouTube videos using Puppeteer. So let's figure out the steps that would be required. So very first step that we would require is open a new browser. In second step, we are going to create a new page. In third step, we would navigate to YouTube watch page. And after we are on the YouTube watch page, we want to actually get the handle of video element. So once we have the handle of video element, we need to get the duration of video. Why we require this? Uh, so whatever the duration we have, we can wait for video to end. And uh, until it is not completed, we will wait on the page. So next thing we need to do is we need to play the video. So once the video is played, we will wait for video to finish. And this finish will depend on the duration of the video. So once that is finished, last step is to close the browser. All right. So let's start with our automation scripts. So very first thing that we would require is we need to import the Puppeteer package. So we will say const Puppeteer equal to require Puppeteer. And next we need to create a if function. And in this if function, we are going to create a async method. And this async method is a fat arrow function that will contain all our steps. So very first thing that we would require is open a new browser. So we will say const browser equal to await puppeter dot launch. And in this launch, we are going to pass few options. So very first thing with the v would require is we will require headless false because we want to open a physical browser. And second thing we need to have a maximize screen. So for that we will say default viewport null. So this will disable the default viewport that is 800 by 600. And next we are going to pass some arcs so these are will make sure that our screen is started in the full screen mode. So these will be passed to the Chrome. So we will say start full screen. And last thing that we would require is executable path. We can't use the default bundled Chromium browser here because S264 library is not packaged with Chromium. However, in Chrome it is. So we need to find this executable path of the Chrome browser. To find the path, what we can do is we can open a browser and in chrome we can type chrome version and here you will find the executable path based on your operating system so i will copy this path and paste this part here so once we have that let me just copy this so it's clear what we are doing here here we open the browser next we need to create a new page so in the next step, we are going to create a new page. And here we are going to say const page equal to browser dot new page. Right. Okay, so once we are on the page, we want to navigate to the YouTube watch page. So I have already one URL that is copied with me. I will say await page dot go to and the URL. So this will open this video page. And next thing we need to get the duration. To get the duration, what we need to do is get the handle of video element and get the duration. So these are one thing. So I can just copy this and paste it here as a comment. So to get the video handle and to get the duration, what we need to do is we need to copy this URL, go to Chrome, paste this URL and pause the video 
and right click on the page not the video object and here if you select this tool and go to the video element this will highlight the video tag and this is the tag that we will be targeting so if we try to do document dot query selector and in this we pass the video element this will show you the same element that we highlighted earlier so this is the element that we are going to target next thing we would require is the total duration of this video as you can see this is 3 minutes 4 second and to get the duration again you can just highlight this and if you do dollar zero dot duration so this will return the total duration which is 184.221 seconds so let's head back to our editor so now what we need to do is we need to get the duration so we will say cons video duration and for video duration we will say await page dot dollar eval now this eval takes two arguments so first argument is the video element and second is the function that it will run against this element so it will pass the element to this function whatever it find using document dot query selector method and we need to get the duration so we will say el dot duration so whatever the actions we performed on the chrome dev tools we are performing similar operations here we are fetching the video element and we are finding the duration of this so once we have the duration the next step is to play the video so to play the video again we need to find the handle so we will go back to the browser and we will right click inspect the element and select this element as you can see this element is having on the class of vtp play button so let's try out so that this this class is not being used by multiple elements so we will say document dot query selector all and in this we will pass this make sure you add a dot here so that this matches all the classes so this returns a single node so we can definitely use this if we do document dot query selector it will still return one single element so that is the selector that we can use so here we are going to say const video play button and in video play button we are going to say await page dot dollar the selector and for selector i will copy the selector from here and paste it here so once we have the video play button we can say await video play button dot click so this will start our video next thing we need to do is we need to wait for the video to complete so we will say wait and video duration into thousand since our video duration is in seconds we need to convert into milliseconds and so don't worry about this wait method we will construct this shortly so let's wait put a comment here wait for video to finish next we are going to say is once the video is finished we need to close the browser so we will say await browser dot close so let's create this wait function function wait and in this we are going to pass the time that will be in milliseconds and this wait function is going to return a promise we will say return new promise and in this we are going to pass a function which will resolve so this will resolve whenever the set timeout is complete so we will say set timeout resolve and the time that it need to wait for so if you are not getting this let me explain we will pass some time here so this promise will resolve after a particular timeout is reached and this wait will over so once we are we click on the video play button it will wait for the duration of the video and next it will close the browser so let's clear up the terminal 
and type node index dot js and see if our script work fine as you can see browser maximized and video started playing and we have the timer also going on on the screen so this video is of 3 minutes and 4 seconds so i will fast forward so that you don't have to wait for entire 3 minutes 4 seconds here so yes as you can see the video completed and browser closed automatically and the prompt was returned back. If you enjoyed this video, please smash that like button. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and turn on the bell notifications so you get updates whenever I post a new video. See you in next one.